can. It was, it was the, uh, it was the, the things librarians were saying, and they were get, kept getting teenagers coming up and asking them all the time, and they'd point to the clock, and they just don't know how to read an analog clock anymore, yeah. because they're so used to everything being digital. Wow. Well, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Are you jealous? Yeah, how come you got the Well, these are different tapes, these are rear tape, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Cool. Right, do you want to have a seat? Okay. Yeah. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Cool. So welcome to the the couple of hours, if you like, on a kinesiology taping. Has anybody done this before? Anybody had a dabble, had a try? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's been more of a like an intro. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm going to focus more on the lower limb. It's normally a one day course that I would do, and then we would cover probably by 18 different techniques, starting on the foot and then finishing typically on a on the tennis elbow and, and wrist yeah, and things like that. So I presume you're all podiatrists? Yeah, so you're all specialists in, because I said to SJ, what's their anatomy like? And she said, they're gonna be amazing. I said, perfect, because I'll be testing them shortly. Yeah, I won't really. But I'll, I'll ask you some questions to see how you get on. Yeah, but I don't then tend to, to specialize on the feet as such. Um, even though it's sort of my area in some respects. I'm an osteopath. I've been osteopath for 19 years, I think, something like that. And before that, I was a sports therapist, and I was in the army as a physical trainer. So exercise was my thing, yeah, in the army. And then I went to sports therapy, and I was a bit bored of that. So then I went to the osteopathic side, and I was a bit bored of that in some ways. So then I'm more lecturing and writing books now. So um, lots of my books are next door. I think I've done sort of like eight with two editions. Yeah, so I'm doing a spinal book. I'll probably do one on ankle and foot, because people keep saying to me, oh, are you going to be teaching ankle foot courses? So uh, I sort of add it in when I do a knee. Um, so I tend to include a little bit because uh, not many people tend to, to do it, if you like. Um, so, so we will see. First question, let's see how you get on with this one. So there's a technique using the white zinc oxide tape, which I presumed you're all utilizing, trained on, sort of, yeah. Uh, there's a technique for plantar fasciitis, and it's called the low dye. Or high dye. Okay, or high dye. Okay, so who, where's it originated from? Where, who named it? Second? Wells. Dye. What do you mean, dye? Dye is the name of the practitioner, is it not? Do you know his name? I can't remember his first name. I'm having a blank. Yeah, yeah, well, his name is Dr. Ralph Dye, who was a, a US podiatrist. Was he US? Yeah, and um, so that's where it's originated. Because a lot of people think dye sounds a bit weird, like low dye. Yeah, so low is obviously relates to the foot, and the dye relates to his name. Yeah, Ralph Dye. And then the high dye, do you know what that one is? Because you mentioned it. It's, it's low dye, but it's, it's similar. It's just that it comes up high up the ankle. Yeah, so it's more of an ankle stabilizing technique. Yeah, so because lots, lots of people, when, I, when I'm teaching podiatrists on K tip courses, uh, they've never heard of it. And I was like, and it surprised me a little bit. It seems it's originated from your, from your sort of profession. You're all familiar with how to do it with the, the white zinc oxide tip? Yeah, and it works really well. The problem is, what do you think the problem is with using that type of tape? Second? It doesn't seem to stick very well. Yeah, it depends on the foot, I, I would say. And also men with hair, it's, it's, it's a bit debatable whether it sticks or not to the, to the hair. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the problem is you don't tend to leave it on for that long. When I used to do it, let's say when I used to look after red in rugby, and one of the guys, and, and the only technique I knew at the time was athletic taping because it was like the in thing. Yeah, so that's all I would use. Uh, then I've been trained in McConnell taping, if you know that name. I'm teaching that tomorrow on knees and shoulders. Yeah, and then there's another taping system called PowerFlex Power Tape, which is from a, a U.S. Uh, athletic trainer called Ron O'Neill. So that's another taping system. And obviously, we've got the K-tip, which originated from Dr. Kenzo in 1973. And it was a Japanese sort of chiropractor. So there's four different types of taping. With athletic tape, because you only leave it on for maybe the game, yeah, or maybe an hour or two. Uh, and also, when you apply the tip and you ask a patient to walk with the, the low dye technique on, yeah, in reality, it doesn't allow the foot mechanics to go through it, its natural pronation because it restricts and supports that medial arch. Okay, so it's almost restrictive. Um, with a sock on, shoe on, it's okay. Yeah, and it's relatively comfortable. Uh, but then if you've got any twists on it and you want to run, 
yeah, then obviously running would be relatively difficult, especially if you're a heel to toe sort of runner. Uh, so when we use the, the K tip application, it would be very different. So the K tip is almost debatable in, in how it works in some respects, because with athletic tape, and let's say you're trying to stabilize an elbow and a patient has pain in extension, then you'll probably tape them in flexion. Okay, it's like, a, like an Achilles tendinopathy. So when I used to teach Achilles taping using athletic tape, we would normally place a foot in the plantar flexion and tape it so we try to limit dorsiflexion. But trying to walk and run is relatively difficult-ish. Yeah, you know, if you've got to run a half marathon and you've taped them in plantar flexion, okay, they'll be almost ripping off within probably 10 minutes because it restricts the motion. Whereas with this tape, it is probably more of a placebo effect to a point, whereas athletic tape is definitely a physiological response because you can see how it works and it does restrict motion. So if you've got an elbow pain and you restrict an extension, you can see it works. Yeah, whereas with a K-tip, because we have something like 120, 140, rock tape says their tape is about 180% stretch. Okay, so we have lots of stretch. When we apply athletic tape, we normally will sort of like uh, apply the joint into a, um, a uh, like a not restricted position, but we try to limit the motion within the joint. Whereas when we apply the K-tip, we normally take that joint range to end range because we want to apply it in function. Okay, so like for instance, when Ron O'Neill taught me about dislocated shoulder, when I've treated dislocated shoulders in rugby, Typically, that athlete is probably not going to be playing for that season. Whereas Ron O'Neill said, well, we spent $10 million on this guy. Yeah, we need him playing next week. Okay, so then they would literally use all this strong tape. It's not really athletic tape. It's a different system. It's like that wrap if you look after horses. And it, uh, and it restricts motion. It's almost like a plaster paris when you look at it. Because one tape fixes to another. So you would limit external rotation like in an abduction. So you basically stop in that movement. So you allow this full range, but you would stop them in that one. Whereas the K-tape wouldn't work like that because we would probably tape the shoulder in full external rotation rather than taping in, say, half medial rotation. Okay, so it, it tends to work. So because it doesn't restrict, patients will sometimes say, well, how does it work? And how do you think it works? Any ideas? Have you read anything? Because the research is, is positive in some ways and is negative in others. They're about sort of like 50-50, depending on which ones you sort of read. Um, any ideas? Because if you look in your book, so the book is for you. Uh, there's a little bit on page. Uh, so if you look on page 20, what is it, 20? 19. Well, let's, let's start with page 19. So this is your book, you can have a read, because I don't be spending hours just on like the theory behind it, otherwise we won't get to do any practical side of it. So if you just look at a simple inflammatory response, it doesn't matter whether you twist an ankle, okay, or whether someone hits, hits the side of your leg, or whether you stick a pin in the skin, okay, the body is typically going to go through a, an inflammatory response, okay, where you're going to get redness, heat, pain, yeah, swelling, loss of range of motion. You're all familiar with the cardinal signs of inflammation, yeah. You know, if someone hits your leg, you know, you might have like a, like a hematoma, like intramuscular or intermuscular hematoma. It doesn't really matter. Okay, it's a swelling. Lymphatic fluid, is, is, it causes swelling. Swelling causes pressure, irritates the nociceptor, and then before you know it, you've got pain. Okay, so swelling causes pressure, pressure causes pain. And the typical way of trying to reduce swelling, apart from taking maybe anti-inflammatory, yeah, would be by the usual, the rest, the ice compression and elevation. Yeah. But then if you turn over the next page, like Kenzo thought, well, Rather than trying to restrict the motion to the tissue, he decided that, well, if we are able to somehow cause a mechanical lifting, and rock tape call it the biomechanical lifting mechanism. So the idea is, is that if we've got tape and it's got this natural stretch to it, and we apply the tape to the skin, okay, in a certain way, then it because it's like a, like a coil, and as you pull it, it let go, it causes like a, a recoil to that sort of tissue. You won't see it. You'll see it in the book I've got next door to show you, the rock tape book, which is like power taping. And on there, they've got a T-shirt, and they've got a bit of tape on it, and you can't see any difference. But if you turn it over and look on the inside, you can see it's almost like convoluted. It's like... Yeah. Part. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it causes like a convolution to this or like the epidermis. Even though you can't see it physically, that's what they reckon happens. It causes this microscopic lift in. So the idea of that lift increase is cause a space. And then the idea of the space will be to allow the lymphatic fluid to then drain back. So if you have like lymphedema massage, then you might find it helps. Yeah, but you might find it, it takes some time to do that. And it's very slow and it's very light. Okay, because most sports massage therapists would almost like miss the lymphatic system to a point because they're almost like using their thumbs and their elbows and things like that. So it's, it's too deep for pressure. Whereas if you see a lymphatic massage specialist, yeah, then it's almost like so light and so slow because they're just trying to perf you know, work on that lymphatic system. So the idea is if you've got tape on and you leave it, not for like an hour for the game, but you leave it for many days, three to five days, then potentially it has more of an effect because it is working whilst you are sleeping. So Kenzo says three to five days would be optimum. Yeah, but after five days, you would then take it off, maybe have a day or two to rest, and then you would then reapply the sole like tape. And that would be <clears throat> one physiological effect, if you like, of how the K-tape would work. But then towards the back, if you turn the last chapter, where you see the fanning taping, you can see that one? Yeah. yeah? If you looked on, like, a... Uh, on Google, and you put, say, K-tip for edema, yeah, or for hematoma, or for bruising, or for this, or for that. There are many, many pictures on there where you'll see the fanning type of tape in over the hematoma, and then like, a, like two or three or four days later, you remove the tape, and you think, wow, I can see the definitive lines of where the tape has been applied. When I've, I've done the rock tape level one and level two, you know, and obviously I'm, I'm linked with them, they sponsor me. So I've done their courses and, it's, and, it's, and I quite like the way they teach it because on the, the PowerPoint is my friend Daniel who's teaching it. And they simply said, when you see the picture of a fan around the area, it doesn't matter where it is, if it's on a shoulder or a knee or, or a forearm, yeah, it's almost simple. They said, we don't really know how this works. And I thought, that's great. Yeah, at least you're honest. You're not trying to, you know, reference this and reference that. And, and at the end of the day, we said, they don't really, you know, and rock tape is, is, it, is originally a tape and product. So all day, every day was about tape. Like me, today I teach K tip, tomorrow I'm teaching the knee, the next day I'm teaching the hip, the next day I'm teaching spinal. So I only think about K taping. Yeah, when I do it a little bit, which I don't much anymore with patients, I don't see many patients. I'm too busy doing other stuff. Mainly on my motorbike, on the dirt, that's another story. And... Um, and other times, then I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on my new book on, on spinal manipulation. So K-tip is a small part of my life. Yeah? Whereas for rock tip, it's a huge part because that's how they make all the money. So they spend all the time researching it, yeah? trying to see you know, what works, what doesn't work, etc. When I wrote my book, there was about 60 different types of tip. And I think I wrote that first edition in uh, 2014. I got another edition somewhere, which you're more than welcome to have a look at. Yeah, so this one here. So this is a second edition. So it's all that you've got in there, but there's some more techniques, self-taping techniques. Uh, in terms of the, the referencing, there's probably not that much difference. A few extra ones, but not really. So that's my, my, my second edition. The first one, you've got all the DVDs. These ones work with the QR codes. So if you're interested in any of the techniques, you can use your phone and go click. Yeah, and then you can find them that way. So people like that. Everything is on YouTube. I've got something like 400 videos on YouTube uh, of all these techniques. So if you're not sure uh, how to do it and what I showed you, any more than welcome just to, to go there and sort of like and watch it. Now, when we get to the ankle, when I tape ankles, okay, which, um, you know, which I've done lots of in my time, um, especially like being in the military side as well, the K tip will work to a point, but because we have that natural stretch, it doesn't give you the stability like the athletic tape would. But then what I've done, I've modified the techniques. So, if you think about this logically, if you've got the stretch of a tape and you take out the stretch and there's no more stretch possible, then that's going to give you more stability than you would if you applied it with half stretch, okay, because you've got this 50% extra stretch. So if you've gone on your ankle and then you've gone over, okay, so what would be the, the, the most common injury to the, the human body in terms of sports-related injury? Inversion sprains. Inversion sprains. I mean, ligament would get damaged? Yeah, so the ATFL. I know you know. Yeah, yeah. Remember, I'm, I'm asking yeah, the rest of the group. Okay, so ATFL. So what does it stand for? Do you know? Yeah, so the anterior tail of fibular ligament. The other ligament that tends to get sprained as well? Which one? 
Do you have a ligament? So you've got ATFL, and then you've got the... No idea. Which one? Okay, and another one? So if you think about the free ligamentous complex, the lateral sort of side. Yeah, if I said CFL? Yeah, so the calcaneofibular ligament. Yeah, yeah. So the majority of the ligamentous sprain, okay, will be to the ATFL. So when I show you the, the tape which I've modified, I quite like that one because we tend to put two sort of like tapes and they act as a sort of like a stirrup and then we can vary then what we can do underneath with like a heel lock. So I'll show you a couple of variations for that one. So my plan was to show you one for like a, like a plantar fascia. Yeah. Um, but it is, if you look on, say, YouTube for K-tip for plantar fascia, a lot of them will be the fingers. Okay, there's like five fingers which go underneath the foot. And when you look at it, you think, wow, that looks amazing. But as soon as you put your socks on, it's not going to be like that because as soon as you pull your socks on, each finger peels. Okay, and it doesn't really do what it should do. And it doesn't really provide much stability. It's more than a, like a, almost like how it looks rather than how it feels. You know, people are almost going, oh my God, that looks amazing. Oh my God, my foot feels so much better because they convince themselves it's actually working when it's probably not really working. Whereas if you've got a different way of applying the tip with a bit more stretch and it gives you a bit more stability, then you might find that should work better than maybe the finger, okay? Um, so when you think about the patients that you see, then, and they've got a true plantar fasciitis, so where would the, the pain be with a plantar fasciitis? We have a, a skeleton there, but in, in terms of anatomy, oh yeah. Okay, well, yeah, so the main, okay, the main, the typical area. Yeah, yeah, so the medial calcaneal tuberosity. Okay, so that's where the majority, if you like, of, of plantar fasciitis would, would, would relate to. Yeah, obviously many, many reasons for, yeah, it's hard to say exactly, you know, there's, there's no one reason yeah, for that, you know, because most of the population, according to the dietist, tend to pronate. Okay, so you can't say because you pronate, you've got this pain. Um, you know, it could be lots of other reasons, yeah, around it. Um, you know, like in the military, when I was in the military, lots of men would have this. When you're 16, yeah, you've just joined, you're not used to uh, running, you're very not used to running generally, and then you've got things on your feet like boots, okay, and then you've got things on your, on your back, yeah, like weight, okay, and then you have to go up mountains, okay, and things like that. So you wonder why, you know, a lot of the, the and then they get shin splints as well. So we can discuss that as we go through. But uh, yeah, so we tend to get pain within that sort of area around here. So that's the medial side of the calcaneal tuberosity, yeah, around there. We can also look at um, where the Achilles comes in here. So this sort of area around there. So we can do one sort of tape and for that. It's, it's conjoined with an Achilles one, yeah, but then you can also modify it. So if you've got sort of heel pain, you know, on, on a child who's maybe eight or nine years old and they've got sort of heel pain, what condition could that be? Stop it. No, it's not. No huh? such thing as severs. Okay. Who, what, what is severs anyway? Calcaneal apophysitis. We don't use the word severs. Okay. Who, who's who's sever? Uh, I don't know why severs in the Okay. Yeah, it was named after James Sever. He was an American. Um, I think it's a surgeon he was. Yeah. But it's, yeah, but it's called calcaneal apophysitis calcanea. Yeah. So it would be a similar thing to uh, on a knee. What's a similar condition to the knee, but in a, a teenager? Yeah, so an Osgood Schlatter, okay? Yeah, so I've been Robert Osgood and Carl Schlatter who named that one around here. Yeah, so if you've got sort of like pain around that sort of area, yeah, then you could call it, is that what you would call it? So you wouldn't call it, the, the nickname would be the Severs. The reason we don't like you, or the reason that the children's physiatrists, or a lot of them don't like them, is if A, it's not a disease, yeah. so it makes it not true. Side, and secondly, it's a problem, it's a problem it's, so it means fuck all. Mm. So if you're using it, it, it catastrophizes it for the patient, and it also makes it, it doesn't actually refer to anything around it. So that's mm. why they tend to prefer calcaneal. So, so what would you call this one then? So it's tibial tuberosity. Okay, so you wouldn't call it Osgood Schlatter. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a little harder to do, but then again, Osgood Schlatter isn't a disease, so yeah. it's not, so it's yeah. severs disease. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's still a pop and apophysitis. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 so you can call it that. Yeah. So no, it's just, it's just avoiding its language. Yeah, <coughs> no, exactly. Yeah, so you can have um, some pain, so you can use some taping. Yeah, so it'll be a similar way to what we do with, with the Achilles. Yeah, and then if you've got time for anything else, we can, you know, like a shin splints or things like that. Yeah. So, um, so I think we'll start on a plantar fascia. Before we 
move on to the practical side. Do you have any questions before we, we, we go on? Because a lot of the information is in the book anyway. And if I, you know, you've got my leaflets there and you've got my cards. If you have any questions, you can just send me. I'm going to be asking somebody stupid, but the zinc the white tip. The white tip, zinc oxide. Yeah. Zinc -oxide. yeah. Lucotype, Lucotype P, yeah. the, brown, the brown one. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. The problem with the brown one was the result you find that you can get a reaction from it. Yeah. I think it's yeah. Yeah. You get it. Mm. All of that yeah. and that those tapes you, you can, I suppose, but there's you such know. a lot of tapes out there as well. No, there's only one, one that's fashioned brown zinc oxide. Oh, God, because I did. You just reacted. Yeah. Like, so you've not, not I, had as many reactions I, recently. I think it's yeah, no, if you use a brown Luca tape, you normally have a, a fix them all underneath it. A, a fix them all. So it's like a, I've got some, I've got more. a fix them all. It's like a, like a micro pore. So you tend, if you do, say, the Luca tape on the shoulder, and then you would probably, or the knee, then you put the white porous tape to protect the skin, mm -hmm. and then you put the brown tape on top of it right. to protect the skin from it. Right. I mean, yeah, I if you're using Luca tape. Yeah. Key, and, and yeah. There's a lot of tapes out there that are absolutely awful. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whereas K-tip is rare to have a, a reaction to the K-tip because it's hypoallergenic and it's latex-free. So we tend to... Um, yeah, it's rare. I've had one on the shoulder. Yeah. And I've probably taught more therapists than probably most people Yeah, in terms of the K-tip. So, um, and naturally, they're going to email me. The problem you've got with the, the, the tape, if you're spending a bit of money, um, like there's a there's a tape called KT tape and you can buy it in boots, but it's for exactly the same size, five meter by five centimeter. It's twenty two pound fifty for one roll, for one roll. Rock tape's about thirteen pound fifty, but then I've got a cold call. It's like JGBM, so John Gibbons Body Master. You get it at forty three percent off, so it's about six seven pound, which is a lot better. But you can't buy you know from eBay for a pound or two. You can go to a pound shop. The problem is if you're using that type of tape. Yeah, then one, it doesn't stick out well, because that's what most athletes would say. It doesn't stick very well. Whereas rock tip have like a H2O version where they've got a bit more adhesive acrylic lay down. They've also got like an RX, which has got a little bit less yeah, for maybe the, the person who has sensitivity issues to the, say, the foot. Yeah, or they're a bit old and the skin's a bit frail. So they do different variations, which is great. And if you have a problem with the rock tip, you can contact them directly or contact me. So it's no problem. Absolutely. Whereas if, I yeah. see like, for a lot of the patients that the, the, the uh, maybe got uh, dry skin. Mm. Um, any issues there? Is it, is it okay? See if you've got, I'm just thinking that some of the patients. Yeah, you could try the, the less, you can try the, the RX tape, uh -huh. which has less acrylic laid down. Okay, so it might not stick so well, uh, but it's worth maybe trying first um, or, you know, once. And then if it's okay, stick with it. And if it doesn't stick that well, yeah, then you can buy like a spray, but I suggest you don't buy sprays. It's like when I did it for athletes where they'd sweat, okay? You know, it's almost one tape on damp tissues. It doesn't stick. Nothing sticks, okay? So you can dry it and you can use like a, a, a kind of tough skin. Yeah, it's like, a, I think it's a Muller tough skin. This is a product. So you can spray, and then it's sticky, and then, you, then the tape will stick. The tape of K-tape works better if it's directly applied to the skin because it should be working on that skin layer. Yeah, if you've got glue, so you've got like the tape, then the glue, then the skin, then you've got a barrier in between, okay? So I suggest we don't use sprays. Uh, but for the, you know, if I looked after a rugby team or a football team on a regular basis and they were, you know, they said, oh, can you just tape my knee up if I'm sweating? I'm not going to say no, okay? Then I probably would spray and play a game and I probably would take it off afterwards. Whereas if you treat an APA, let's say you're treating the plantar fascia, whichever method you do, and then you think, oh, I wouldn't mind, you know, they say, well, you know, what about tape? I've looked at tape and I'm, I say, well, I can do some tape for you. Then you can like cleanse the skin, apply the tip and leave it on for five days and then say have a day or two rest, give them some exercise in between and you can shower as normal. Yeah, it shouldn't cause a problem. There's no real contraindications. You probably wouldn't go over varicosities on the leg and you know, anything that's you know, untoward. Uh, but for, for most you know, skin, then you should be able to, to apply it. M men with hair, sometimes we would just trim it a little bit rather than shaving it completely. Yeah. 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 So, but then it does seem to stick okay. Not brilliant. Yeah. Whereas, you know, when I looked after teams, I would normally say to the men, you know, from where I'm taping the ankle, from there down, there's a razor. Off you go. Shave it. Okay. Um, then it saves you using the under wrap first. Uh, whereas lots of the men would want the under wrap just to protect the hairs. Okay. So, um, you know, if you've done that sort of a sport, you, you sort of understand 
Whereas with KTIP, it doesn't seem to, to cause too much of a, of a problem. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so we'll start with, uh, can I use your foot? Yes. If you don't mind. Um, I, I guess we don't really need, so I'll probably just... I actually packed shorts. Okay, do you want to pop? I don't know whether you need I don't need shorts for this first one. I thought I would take care. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't really need shorts for this. As long as they just go up a little bit, and that would be okay. So if I use this as a demo, on yep. here, so I don't need all these. Because I was expecting like 20, 20 of you. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm going to get you to, if you want to come round, if you want to, I know she's filming, so that's fine. Yeah, I will. Oh, I am. So bad. Sorry. Hmm. If you're coming up front, so far, be. Is it okay there? Yeah. You want me to turn over. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's say, for instance, you've got pain around that area and you've decided that it is a plantar fasciitis. Okay. It might not be, but uh, let's say we, we treat it accordingly. And then you've decided to use some of the tape. Then this is how I would apply it. There's many techniques. You know, if you looked at YouTube, it's probably five to ten. To probably 200, yeah, depending. Um, so this one tends to work for me. I'm not anybody come back saying it hasn't really helped, which I quite like, because if it doesn't work, I normally modify and change it, yeah, and things like that. But I must have done this uh, thousands of times, yeah, and teaching it, things like that. Now, what Kenzo says is that we would normally, like for instance, if I was doing a low die taping technique, then I would probably tape a foot in relative neutral. And so I would use the zinc oxide, but within, in this case, we are going to apply a dorsiflexion, so we are what they call preloading. So rock tape will say we would preload the tissue. So we preload it, so we place it into a stretch, and we apply tape over a stretched tissue. Because when you think about, say, an athlete who's going to say, it doesn't matter whether they're going to throw a javelin, okay, or, or, or kick a ball, okay, if you restrict the motion, so if I tape the shoulder with athletic tape and I limit extra rotation and abduction, then I'm going to limit that athlete during his activity. Because the word rest and the word athlete, they don't really go together. Okay, whatever you say to the athlete, you say, well, what, what, you want me to rest? I can't do rest, I can't rest. Okay, so, you know, they will be doing something, and if you don't advise them accordingly, they'll probably go and see someone else. They'll say, you know, can you not just tape me and I can still play or train or this or that? And go, yeah, okay, I can I'll probably modify the tape for you. And that's what I mean. So you don't want to be restricting motion. Okay, so we'd almost tape take the limb to the point which is required in the sport. So in this case, because when we're walking, we want to be lifting the foot up, so it's going to be dorsiflexion. We don't want to be taping it in a plantar flex position. Okay, so, so we are preloading. Then when we apply the tape, it's called the stabilizing, and then we normally apply a smaller piece of tape, and then that would be known as one either the pain-relieving strip or the decompression strip. Okay, so rock tape say we preload, we stabilize, we decompress, so it follows the three, but then we do modify yeah, around it, otherwise each technique would be similar, yeah, and I try to, to vary it for each one. So in terms of a tape, on the back of some tapes, okay, rock tape for some, but not many, there are like squares. So like one, two, three, uh, four, five, I think that's five, huh? so five, like a five square, okay, I think it's five, one, two, three, yeah. So a five square would be a typical, what we call an eye strip. And you would get 20 of these at size five within one box, okay? That is normally what you would get. But on some of the Ewer tip, the rock tip, you might not see the squares, so you'd almost have to roughly take that sort of measurement, yeah, along there. Um, you can do the measurement if you want to. You can almost like go from the, the distal part of the foot to sort of like, um, a, well, probably a, a quarter of a way up, up the, the lower limb, yeah, around that sort of area. But when we put stretch on to it, it's going to go a little bit further. Okay, so, um, but, um, you know, if your tape has the squares on the back, uh, you look at the rock tape ones, the one you got, and probably they just have, like, motivational comments and, and jokes. Now, place one bit of tape over it, so you fold it, and just trim those ends. Any ideas why? 
Yeah, so when you apply it, you know, when you put your socks and shoes on, that you know, if, you, if you're rubbing it, say, or drying it after a shower, and there's a corner, it will peel, and if it peels, it's going to peel off. Okay, so whereas a, a, if you round the end, so that would be a pre cut, if you like now. Yeah, so if you bought the KT pre cut tape and you pulled one bit off, it would look like this. So the ends are rounded, okay, and it would be this size, and you get 20 of them in a box. The problem is with pre cut tape is that when I looked after the boat race team of Oxford, they were between six foot two and six foot nine tall. So if I'm doing their hamstring and I'm using a piece of pre cut tape, then it's not going to work for them. Yeah, so I need to, to design it, if you like, for them. So I'll use my... Why not predict it? <laughs> so, I'm, I'm just, I guess how you do that, yeah. Yeah, as you say, how do you cut the ends on that one? Yeah. You'd have to show me that one. Okay, so I've got two bits from there. The colors are irrelevant, okay? Um, so it makes no difference what color. But it's amazing how people smile, you know, when you go, you know, when you say, what color would you like? I go, well, what color have you got? And I go, well, I got pink. And the girl goes, pink. I love pink. I love pink. Yeah. Whereas some of them, they're like, oh, I don't like that color. Like the, the, the tan color seems to be not, not very popular. Okay. But in clinical sports medicine, it's, it's one of the most popular. Yeah, because it sort of like blends in with the color of your skin. And if you've got, say, you've had a mastectomy, and then you've got um, lymphedema in the arm, and then you wouldn't want any colors in your arm if you're going to, you know, to the supermarket. So to have a, a light color, but skin color, just blends in, and you wouldn't really see it. Okay, so it's, you know, it's more appropriate. So from here, we bring the foot in this position. You okay with that? Yeah, because it's not going to cause an increase of symptoms, really. It might do a little bit, but, you know, you just back off a little bit. So from here, if you've got, like, squares and you split it down to five, we would normally say split one of the squares. Okay, so you just, you literally just pull it and it will just peel the tape. Now, you have two choices here. If I pull it all the way off, it means I've got to touch this end to hold it, and it means that I could take a layer off the acrylic. Okay, and I'll show you another way in a second. But I only tend to hold the end a little bit. And you apply that distal to where the pain is. So the pain's here. So we apply that first square. We don't tend to have any stretch on that first square. Because if I add stretch, if I lay it down and then I pull it, it's going to cause like an irritation to where it attaches to. So we don't tend to have stretch at the beginning or the end. So, so we're all a bit in the middle. If you're going to apply stretch, would be within that sort of component. So from here, it's awkward to try to peel this back now. So what you would do is lock it with two fingers, pull it, and it then causes it to lift. And then you can peel it back. So what I suggest with this one is we lock it and we apply 100% stretch. And then we back off to 50, and then we go anywhere between 50 and 75. Okay, I apply it to the area. Because it's not a muscle or tendon as such, it's more of a connective tissue of the plantar fascia, then this is what seems to work better yeah, where it requires a bit more stability. You know, it's like the, the low die, it's, it's quite firm taping. Whereas if you apply no stretch, okay, you're just laying it down, then I think it works better with a little bit of stretch. But then 50% stretch to ease off here, and no stretch at the end. Feed her out, blend it around the Achilles, blend it around the arch of the foot, pull a piece of tape, and then the idea is, is that the tape is heat activated for the acrylic, so it sticks better when it's a bit warmer. You'd be amazed when you take this tape off, say, in an hour, trying to peel it off feels quite firm. Really? Yeah, on, yeah. 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 So then I would heat activate it. You can use your hands if you want to. Yeah, so you can use your hands. The problem is your hands, sometimes on the corner, sometimes you can call it to lift. Yeah, you can catch it. So that's part one done, and it's stuck very well to her foot. Yeah, around here. So the second one, I would normally go from the medial side to the lateral side. So the same again. So this time, I'm not going to peel it off. I'm just going to peel it back. Okay, so I'm not going to contact the acrylic anymore. Okay, so I can apply that. I can stick that down just above the medial malleolus along here. So from there, I can pull that, peel it back to the first square, lock it down, and again, 100, 50, 75, come round. And then as it comes to the lateral malleolus, ease off a little bit, okay, because it doesn't really affect the lateral side. Blend it around the bumps of the bones. And again, just for a couple of seconds, just heat activate. 
Now, if it didn't work, let's say, for instance, can I have a stand and have a walk, please? Obviously, once you walk in, it's not going to restrict the motion. If, for instance, you know, like a two or three days later, she said, and I'm not really sure, but the tail feels a bit too tight, okay, because it might. And then next time, rather than applying more tension to it, I might go less, because Kenzo says sometimes less is best, okay? Rather than making it feel tight and restricted, you know, wrap, wrapping it around, almost like if you've got 75% stretch and it wasn't working, go to 50, okay? Go to 50%. Okay, and if that didn't work, go to 25. So rather than say, oh, let's go to maximum and make it feel as tight as we can. Okay, so Ken just says less is best on there. Okay, so it doesn't restrict. It's not going to no, prevent the foot. Like no, the and also, you know, you might, I don't know whether you do or not these days, but, you know, think about what's that sock called where you try to, the Strasbourg sock? Do you recommend that anymore or not? Sock? Yeah, is that out? Sock, yeah? the one that keeps your... Yeah, um, yeah. Plantar yeah. fascias and no. Why not? It doesn't do anything. The issue with yeah. plantar fasciitis is a weakness in the tissue. Usually, mm. you need to strengthen the tissue. So, mm. not just stretching it. Mm. It's also a problem when it's active, not lying. But I'm sure some people on Amazon would be buying them. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, if you look, if you look at that type of device, okay. So the idea of this is that it's potentially just causing a microscopic lift whilst you're sleeping for a few days. Okay, so um. Uh, and then they can take it off themselves. Yeah, and maybe five days later, it's not difficult. Yeah, to take off and things like that. You know, you can shower as normal. Um, but it, no, it just it's something like because you know, people in where I was, you know, I teach all my staff and all that stuff. But people like athletes in particular will say, "Oh, I only want to have K-tip. I've seen it, you know, and I just want to try it." Okay, so you know whether they um, believe it's going to work or not because they've asked for it and they've got their potential condition. Yeah, because you've spent time and effort with a person applying yeah, and talking about it, et cetera, et cetera, then more than likely they are going to improve, whether it's a, you know, a, a true healing mechanism from the tape or whether it's a placebo because they think it's doing them good. Okay, so yeah, it's... Yeah, it's well for the people. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know whether it maybe in my head or not, but it feels like I can feel it more... So You're aware of it. When I was yeah. walking with it, I, I didn't really notice it at all. Yeah. Whereas now, I don't feel restricted, but I can feel it. You can, yeah, you're aware of, of it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. Like, like Kendra says, within five to ten minutes, you won't know the tape's on. Yeah, which makes sense. Yeah, when you, you know, when you put your sock on your shoe and you walk away now, you'd be like, you know, which. Have I got any zinc? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I do have zinc oxide. Yeah, you need to put on zinc oxide another foot. Yeah, well, it'd be very different when she walked. Yeah, she would like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, rigid, exactly. It wouldn't be allowed to, to collapse the foot. Mm. Yeah. And I think it all has its place. Yeah, I think, you know, you need the skill of all types of taping systems, if you like. Yeah, because I do think the low die has, it, has its place. If you want to restrict it, it's, it's very painful. You want to offload it, and, and I think that would probably be okay. Yeah, but then most people these days don't want to learn any of the athletic tape. I used to teach it every month, athletic taping, but now it's, well, it's hard to find a course on it. It's probably, you're not using, you're not, since this, you're not using it anymore? I don't teach anymore, at all. Yeah, because no one wants want to do it. No one wants to learn it. Yeah, you know, there are some, some would. I think you mean the athletic tape, you've got the K tape. Athletic tape. Yeah, I'm, yeah so I'm saying you just wouldn't use that. Then, unless you wanted to, uh, well, if I was looking after a, f a rugby football team, you know, if you're looking at, say, the, the rugby team, then a lot of them still have athletic tape on. Okay, you know, but then you do see the odd colours around the place. Not so much in rugby, yeah, more so in like, you know, the other sport, the tennis and the football and things like that. Well, it depends on the tape. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you've got corruptly felt around the AC joint with it, you know, a bit of stuff over it and, you know, just strap it down as firm as you can. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. You want to have a go? Yeah. You want to try, please? Yeah. So, we've got three couches. Yeah. So, if you want to use them. So, um, so yeah, there's going to be a three and a two. Yeah. So, it'll be a three and a two from there. So, I'll remove all this as well then.
you can uh, maybe use two different colors. So you got enough tape. So if you just cut two, two five strips each, uh, if you're not sure of the size of a five, and you can use this as a template, you can cut one of these fives, because I'm not sure if you've got them or not. Yeah, so you can use this as a template. Yeah. yeah, it's only a rock tip, I don't seem to have a five. Yeah, so use that as a template. Thank you. Yeah. One of the things I, I suppose I was thinking about is when most of the diabetes have patients in the care, they'll have them in a supine position. Right? Yeah, you can do, you can do might not. You can do it supine, just have a foot so up. I mean, so just basically have yeah, just have a foot off the edge. Actively dorsiflex, just yeah. themselves. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. it, just maybe thinking about that, the position that you would be in. You wouldn't ordinarily have your patient in a prone position. Yeah. No. So it's okay. just, you know, I'm just kind of... Yeah, yeah they, could, they could be laying on the back with a leg leg up and just lift. Or you put like a, a crepe bandage over and they just slowly pull up and just hold their foot up. That'd, that'd be okay. Yeah. Almost yeah. like an ankle. So the next one we'll do an ankle taping from that supine position. Yeah. So that, that would be okay. Most of the patients will be... Um, yeah. I've, I've do you want to prep some tape? Do you want to try? Yeah. yeah. So you've got another couch here. So you have three couches. Five. Yeah, five squares. Two. <laughs> well, it depends on the size of a foot. If you got, if you, yeah, if you got um, youngsters, then you probably use four squares. If you got like men who are size 12, 13s, then you probably need need six squares. Like both of them are five. five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I tend to use. Yeah, my friend, that's my friend's favorite one. I'm not sure I like it that much. Two days ago. Oh. So, it just That's okay. I can move up. <coughs> hmm? Is what? Is what? Oh, no, I would. Yeah, I was looking. I was watching. You can do on my tribosis. I see how good they are. Rock tape. Right yeah, probably, probably. No stretch on the first square. And then yeah, rather than trying to peel it, if you lock it oh, with the finger away. and pull, it will lift. Yeah, so that's your starting point. And you can peel that bit at the back end. So yeah, we'll just pull that back to the first square. And just have a go at the stretch and just see how it feels. So that's 100%. Yeah, I'll be 50. 50 so 
we want to do it 75. Yeah, you might have to come down a bit so it comes under the Achilles. Yeah, because this bit's quite long. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, then, some of the tape seems to stretch more than others, like the rock tape with a brand on. Yeah, the, the cow print, because it's printed, it, it, does, it doesn't allow the stretch as much. Okay. Whereas the plain tip has more stretch. Yeah, so... Uh, Does that make that one then a slightly better if you were wanting more support or something? You would use more of the... You probably get more support from that because it's... It, yeah, yeah. Whereas this one has... It's almost like hypermobile stretch. You could, do, you could actually use it. <laughs> you could, yeah. Yeah, like the, anything with a print on. The, the one I've got, the, the plain tape is definitely... get less stretch on it yeah. than the brands and just rock tape like the black or the red. Okay. Yeah, this is the origin of the tape. Yeah, the black. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. And you can go from the inside to the outside. Yeah, that's good. Well, yeah. A lot of people would struggle to, to peel it back there. Because most people would just, like I would, just, just rip the tape. Yeah, like trying to peel it back like you've done. Just peel at the edge. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if I was, say, using this bit of tape, rather than trying to find that edge and peel it, which would take me forever, I would just find the first square and just literally just pull it. This one's not, you see, it's not got, yeah. uh, there's no serration in that. So yeah, well, there's, no, there's, no, there's no serrations anyway. Just, just give it a, a Yeah, yeah, but trying to rip it like this, just, just pull it. Ah, right, yeah, okay. and try again. Yeah, because a lot of people will try to almost like touch, twist touch it, it twist much. it. Yeah, but it's almost just like, and you can, like a, yeah, it just okay. it breaks easy. Well done. Yeah, well done. Good. Yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. Sticks really well. I said, and then peel this back. So peel this back to the. Mm -hmm. like, well, you might as well take a bit off now because you've pulled that. That's fine. Lock it. So try 100, go to 50, 75, and then around where the pain would be. Then the and then just ease it off a little bit. And then now you can just use the other hand just to glide it up. It. Sometimes it gets twisted a little bit. It doesn't matter if it twists on the side. If it twists underneath, it might cause a blister if you have to walk walk distance. I know the therapist doesn't like this. They try to get the all the yeah. Hmm. Mm. Fix me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can get the same effect on a K tip. You probably could. Yeah. You push it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, like the shin plane, you, you do almost like a similar thing. Uh -huh. Because the idea of a K-tip would be that you tape in a preloaded position. Mm -hmm. But when you've got like a, a medial stress syndrome with a the shin, then I almost like pull the tape into the bone, mm -hmm. as in pull the tissue towards the bone. Yeah, what do you do? So you're almost like, you're almost compressing uh -huh. in. Some sort of trigger point, like pushing in. Yeah, so you're almost trying to prevent that traction. Yeah, yeah so you're locking it in. Yeah. 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 But yes, on a plantar fascia, you probably do a similar I thing again. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes actually the least that I would give patients for a plantar fasciitis is um, compression right into it. Mm. Actually, mm. So because they might have straight. See, that's my key. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Well, if, it, if it works, it doesn't really matter. I would say. Exactly. Yeah. And if a patient has reduction of symptoms yeah, over yeah. a week or two. Yeah, if you start in from there, you don't know where it's going to finish, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, Wait, whereas if you started on a, on a ball of a foot, oh, yeah, because yeah. 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 if you pull it, it might, pass, it might go into that's the toes. Right. That's why yeah, that's it. That's it, pull it so then it, then it causes a peeling, that's it. Then you can peel it back to the first square. So if you peel this back to the first square and hold it, that's it. Then all of it's going to stick on, lock it down. So probably about 75% stretch, yeah. 
When Azzy comes up to kill you, you can ease off a little bit then. Yeah. Is that from rugby or is that from shaving? It's, it's from after the rough and it's rubbing. Mm. <laughs> I was going to say, is that a blunt razor? Is that rugby as well? Yeah. yeah. What are you, a winger? Yes. Mm. You should play them. Uh-huh. Massage the rugby players. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Robin trying to do that. If you lock it and pull it, and just pull, it, then it goes lifts, see? Yeah, and then you can peel this back, it back in. So you, you don't have to hold it now. You can just peel it back to there. And then you hold up it, and then you lock it down with two, one or two fingers. And then, and then I would say 100, and then back off to 50. Yeah. No, it's because I'm using the plain tip, and it'll have more stretch. That's it. And then as it comes up to Achilles, I probably would ease off a little bit, and then feed it up. That's it. Last one, you pull your swords out. Mm. <laughs> you don't want to break to my house. We have so many swords. You just don't want to. Swords, what? Swords, daggers. Who is rounded? Like that will do, John. Behave yourself. <laughs> Where's my scissors? Where do you put them? I like them. They're not. I'm not as sticky as you. And then the second one from the inside, yeah? And that's enough. I mean, I mean, this is like, we've been dancing for 38 years. Mm. Some people have mixed the K-tip with the athletic, with the athletic tape. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a good idea to do, it's either one or the other. Yeah, but then if you, you know, it's almost like you try it, if it works, you stick with it. If it doesn't try, you almost have to try to modify it. Yeah, so a lot of people will will add on like another piece where they make it a bit tighter around the, the heel, the calcaneus. Well, I have. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you could do. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's uh, love. It's love, and then you're getting attention. Yeah. I said, then just peel up a bit back, yeah. and then from there you can almost like you know if you if you're not sure if you wanted a bit more tension you can almost like with this bit say just on that say inch or two you can almost like lock it there tension it maximally you know what I mean and then as soon as it sticks you can bring it right off so the tension's only there yeah yeah okay so you could then. It is just about trial and error. You know, you try it, if it works, you stick with it. And if it doesn't, so now that would be more stable in here, just on that, just on that bit where we increase that tension. Yeah, and then we'd heat activate it. Yeah. But it is, it's just very different. I mean, I've been taking the sun for the last week while because I. Well, mm. try it, try it on him, and just see what he thinks. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you probably, so you're probably doing it every day, potentially. Whereas this one, you just do it, and then like maybe do it in in three days. Change it. I mean, I'll just show you this. Just interesting. Oh, God. I'm just thinking about how cheap and it's Oh, God. Okay. That's all right. Yeah, I know what I mean. Okay. Because I'm thinking about my but, um, okay, should, are we done? Should we move on to the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Look how much I've got on my son. Compared to what? Yeah. Oh, right. That's just one side of his suit, honestly. And how often have you been taping him? Uh, 
Is this to play or is this to reduce yeah, the pain? To play. Okay. The body plays. Okay. So what, every time? Uh, yeah, so stop doing now. Right. Do you want to come up on your necklace? Yeah. Do you want to lie up on your I'll use you next. So now we do an ankle inversion sprain, okay? Inversion sprain. In fact, just thinking of a demo. As you say, this one's swollen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will do this one. The last couple of days, just, I've actually did all three. I broke all three. Mm. Yeah, I was looking at that. No, that was out holding the dog. I went over a stone on the ground. So she actually got a sprain. This one, you can see the swelling on the, the lateral malleolus. Yeah, on that. Already. So what I've got now. So I'm going to show you, like in my book, um, this is a variation on on what I'm showing you in there. So this would be. I don't need that one. So we've got So this would be like a seven in terms of a length, yeah, give or take. Sometimes I use a six, but typically when we've sprained the ankle, uh, what tendon attaches to the fifth metatarsal issue? Sure. Which one? The brevis, yeah. Yeah, so the peroneal brevis, okay, and then obviously the longest would come around the cuboid, yeah, and attach to the first med over here. So the two tendons can sometimes get, like, uh, strained mm -hmm. when you go over, and then you can even see gravitational bleeding, yeah, uh, right up on that lateral side. Bleeding. Yeah, so when you're laying down, yeah, so when it's bleeding. Oh, it bleeding, I thought you said bleeding. No, bleeding is my accent, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you'll see, like, bruising all the way down into the toes, all the usual stuff, or even, like, almost like mid sort of lateral sprain, yeah, or it can go right up to here. So that's why we might use a longer one, because we want to include the peroneae rather than just stabilizing the ATFL and the CFL, yeah, around that sort of area. So when I do this one, when I was in the military, we would call this, we can almost get away with just using one strip, and they call it like a J strap. So when you are at, say, end, end point of rehab, but then the player is like, oh. I want to be taped, but I'm pretty good. I'm not really sure. And he could just, you know, but then you've done this over a period and you're sort of whittling him down or her down over the weeks, okay? And then they're almost there. But they're like, oh, I think I just need a little bit more stability. So rather than doing a full tape in everything, you can just do one strip, yeah? And then you can change the tension on it, like 100%, 75%, 50%, no stretch. But you might not tell them there's no stretch. Okay, so you just slowly just whittling it down. Yeah. So what we're going to do is do two. So we're going to spread it over, and that will be seven and a half centimeter, rather than all the way for ten centimeter. Okay. So we overlap. So we'll cover the ATFL and the CFL, and it works really well. Okay. So what we're going to do is with a foot, we don't tend to start with it preloaded like an inversion because that's how you sprain it. So we'd almost want to be more into dorsi eversion, almost not neutral, but into an everted position because we want to like stabilize the lateral side here. Okay, so we want to almost prevent her from going back over. Okay, so we can start in that sort of position here. So first one, we're going to go above the medial malleolus. Okay, but we're going to go slightly anterior. Not that it matters. You can go anterior or posterior. So anterior of, you see why. So pull and peel to the first square. Now from there, now if you watch this one now, so if I lock it down and go all the way, so it's 100% stretch. So from there, so I go anterior all the way around, okay? And then this one is going to, if I just turn the leg slightly that way, okay? This one is going to cover more the ATFL. Okay, from there, and I've put in 100% stretch, so I've given maximum stability to that anterior. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, so it's anterior of the malleolus. Okay. So you can probably guess now the second one, if I wanted to include the CFL, is going to overlap, okay, and it's going to go posterior, pull, from there, 100% stretch. Try not to get twist underneath. It doesn't really matter if you get a twist on the side because you're not gonna, it's not gonna cause too much of a problem. And then stick that down. 
100% stretch. Blend it. Be careful because they might be pretty tender if they've sprained it. You potentially could do this in an acute ankle because you're not wrapping around it. Okay? Okay, so you're not causing a compression yeah. around. You wouldn't want to be wrapping. A friend of mine, um, he's not around anymore, but um, he would use like a, a bubble wrap. Sounds a bit weird. So like the bubble wrap that comes around like a TV and things like that. Mm -hmm. So he cuts a bit of that out, okay? And then that's amazing because he puts it around an ankle, puts a little bit of tape, and it gives you compression and a bit of um, protection at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So um, so with his, and he looked after Morecambe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Morecambe Football Club. So he only wanted a little bit of protection. Um, and it just seemed to, to work quite well for him. So that's... Did you ever use the pepper tape rather than using you know, the waiter tape? No, because it's ten. It's too wide. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's ten centimeter. They do a, a, a rock tip. It's called the Big Daddy. But it's too wide. So I would normally use two strips, and then that in itself would give you some support on that lateral side. Okay. Now, if you wanted to take it to another stage, then you can either use freeze. I think because you've got a sprain, I might have to do a, a four foot on. I'd use it. I'll use a rock tip one this one. So if I do a one, it depends on the size of the ankle. So you have to. For some, it's a three. For some, it's a four. So if I've got, say, two fours, so with this one, if you bring your foot a little bit towards me, bring your foot up a bit, so we're going to come around anterior part of the joint line. Okay, so with this one, I'm going to, so we're going to do two there. So I start around there, the anterior joint, pull, and with this one, about 50% stretch, come around, but I need a bit more for you. I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to change that one. So can I ask, like, why, so what, if we start to get dorsiflexion for taking the plantar fascia, but yeah. we're coming to the last one, we don't we don't want to tape an inversion because we, we don't want to tape into injury okay. whereas this is in terms of k-tip this would be an exception to the rule because most k-tip like 80 percent of k-tip in we would preload so we would preload the tissue uh -huh. but because we've got an ankle inversion sprain we can't preload the tissue into inversion to tape because we tape it into an injury so we might make it more susceptible to pulling it in. Is that answering oh. the question? So we have to tape out to stabilize it. So, so it is an exception to the K-tip rules, okay. if you like. Okay, so this would be a bit wider, yeah, to cover the malleolus in here. So it's normally like a free to fart. Let me just show you again. Let's go that. So pull. Come around. That's what I mean. So I quite like it when you have to adapt it rather than just using this sort of like standard size tape. So for... Pull that, so 50% stretch. Come round, just above the ATFL, the first one. So still, we're not contacting. Mm. Okay, so again, for an acute ankle, it would be okay. Because there's a gap in between. And then from there. And then this covers CFL and the lower part of the ATFL. Around there. I'd leave, leave it on for days, a few days. I'd say I'll leave it on as, as long as they, they comfortably can. But they can ice over this. You can ice over it, yeah, because it's only cotton based. Okay, so they can put ice packs over this. Yeah. Just have a stand of a walk and just see what you think. Yeah. Okay, so it's not going to stop you going over. But I'm hoping that you will feel tension as she goes on that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it would be ideal before they play, before they train. Okay, if you've got an acute ankle, as long as you're not contacted, as long as you're not wrapping around, and you allow it to swell, because nature can't stop it from swelling. Okay, so, um, but it's just going to give you that lateral support. Okay, from all that sort of area. But I've even taught ladies where you know she's unstable she's on top of a mountain and she's like oh i'm not sure i want to walk up like snow on your ben nevis because i'm worried about my ankles i said well do this before you go yeah and then um i mentioned like a walking holiday i mean i, I taught her how to did it and then she said john I'm, I, I'm teaching all my friends 
Yeah, so all the girlfriends were all taped as well. And the same for my knees. Yeah. But it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good. Yeah, no, I quite like that one because you can, you can physically feel, but it does restrict the motion because you've took the tension out. Before I came, it was, you put on going, Oh, right, okay, let's get going. Yeah. Mm. So do you want to try this one? And then we can go on to the Achilles, then. Huh? Yeah, so have a go. So you need two longer strips. So say sevens and two fives. Yeah, so I normally show this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think in the, the second edition K-tip, it's in, it's in there. Yeah. So you can, you can use like a 6, 7, 8 for that one. Yeah. I've got enough of those second editions if they want one each as well, then. There's no problem. Of these group. This group only. Yeah. 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 So you can have a book each. There you go. So if you look in there on the ankle tape, then there's one for you, Nicola. Yeah. And then there's QR codes then. So if you're not sure how to do it, just use your phone, scan it. Um, yeah. There There's images of. <laughs> yeah. so there's one each for you. Yeah. So then, yeah, so the new ankle one, which is in there, is not in my older book. And there's also a self tape, and they can, you can teach them to do it themselves. There's QR codes, yeah. So there's a book there for you. Yeah, so the ankle one. And then you got the self taping, so QR codes. So if you scan it, you just watch me teaching it. Yeah. My husband's done that a few times. He's actually slapped the. the ATF, yeah. Yeah, so it's that's quite easily done. But it's, that's yeah. Good to have the strapping. Yeah. But also, you can tell a patient if you know, if it, you know if you're teaching a patient to do it, you can just say, just look at this video, and then it, then you show them, and if they forget, just say, just follow that. Uh, yeah. It is clever. All my books are that now. My new book on nerves. Yeah. Yeah, no, a lot of people like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you start lower on here, but you'll end up finishing higher, so you probably go up in the gene a bit. Yeah. That's it. So remember, you start from the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Start from the inside to be out. Lower there, yeah, and higher there. That's why it's called like a J strap. Yeah. So it looks like a letter J. Yeah, because I've used it once on somebody. I was actually friend, and it really worked. I've got. I don't know what I was doing, but I just followed the picture, but it worked. Exactly. As long as it works. So it goes behind. Well, remember we're doing two. So one's going to go slightly forward. One's going to slightly back. Doesn't matter which one you start with. Right. Because they're going to both cross the cross malleolus, yeah? Cross, cross, cross. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so you can vary the tension. Like if it's if they're really unsure of the ankle and they want maximum stability, then I'd probably say take out all the stretch. Yeah. And then as the weeks progress and they get more stable, you go from 100 to 75. Yeah, and then you just reduce it a little bit. And then eventually you you can just go to one strip, and that, and that in itself works very well because it's very quick. It's actually it's just about practice. It's like a woman in life, isn't it? It's it is. Practice. At least I now know what what to do. Yeah. 
What's the matter? It's colder though. It's not cold here. Yeah? It's not like you. It's not like you. Do you want my jacket? No. I got a scarf. Yeah. Yeah. These are the cenotes, see this? That's a cenote in uh, Mexico. So that's where I go diving in. Have you been there? Yeah, I've been there. I've been, and you can see the roots of the tree comes right down. So these are good cave. Where is Mexico? Um, you, you go to Cancun and go south to River Maya, R Riviera Maya. Well, it looks like it is. It might not be, but it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but these go deep. Good diving in there. Oh, he loves diving. Yeah, I love diving, yeah. There you go. Yeah, well, that's, that's just... Jamaica, but that's about it. It's supposed to be the portal to the underworld or something. What, cave down? Cenotes. Cenotes, yes. Yeah, because that Steve Bachel did Cenotes in New Mexico with a team trying to, like, map the new areas. Oh, goodness. I think that would be great, but terrifying. Terrifying. Well, you see him on one bit, and he's got, like, this cave leader or cave diver who just doesn't care. And um, and then he's literally going in, you know, I've been in, I, I teach caving and I dive. So obviously I do together, but to go in, in you know, like going under that table oh, and it's, and you can't see much and you've got to take off your kit like, and yeah. push, push it in front of you. It's you only get mask on. No. Yeah. And then Steve Baxel oh, went through and he went, that's me done. Yes. I'll just set up my open water. Yeah. Where's the, <laughs> where's the cave? leader diver he carried on just going down you see him trying to go through little holes with his little reel yeah. of cable yeah. to the end no, and he left him there no. yeah that'll probably be me yeah yeah he's amazing yeah but i find caves when there's no water involved a little bit scary so we're adding yeah yeah no i like it mm. um, yeah, be, I like, where's that? That was like Grand Canyon. My colleague here, Pauline, hmm. is just buying teeth. Are you teeth in sciatica? Um, you can. Well, they, 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 because when you think about sciatica, if you've got pain down that sciatic nerve, yeah, yeah even though obviously it's from L4 or 5, uh, S1 nerve root, uh, it's not in there. Um, so obviously the, the source of problem is in the lower back. But, because obviously you're going to get symptoms neurally into the leg and ankle and foot, then potentially you could tape along that sciatic pathway. So it's, it's, it's a potential yes, you could, um, rather than just taping where the lower back is. You have a lower back pain. I saw your pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going right round your ankle, so I'm going to yeah. be following Yeah, so you can start, here. say, here. So one there, yeah, and, then and one there. there. Yeah, and then that one comes around and finishes just in front of the, yeah, the lateral. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 You don't need to rip up it. Just if you no, leave it. Leave, you leave, to leave. It yeah, okay. If you pull it, you can just pull it, peel it back. Okay. Yeah. And then peel that bit back to the first okay. row. That's it. Yeah. Peel that back. And just then hold that last hold bit. That. Yeah. Right, so what am I doing? And then come round. And then because that is longer, probably four. If I use a four on Nicholas right, foot, so it would be right. Right, so. Yeah. And then that's probably. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'd, yeah. So it, it can go all the way around. But if you've got an acute ankle, you'd want to have a gap. Uh, yeah. yeah. And the that's second one, right. and the second one's going to come just a bit lower. Yeah. And ideally, we'd round the ends. Yeah. 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 You don't want it too restricted, really. Well, you could. You could go around. Uh, you know, if it's like just for a ninety-minute game, it'd be fine. Yeah. But if it's good, if you know it's going to swell, you don't want to be restricting the ankle to do its natural motion. Yeah, or swelling because you can't stop it. Not really. Once it's going, that's it. And then finish around here. Good. Mm, so you can leave it higher. Okay, well, you want to be okay? Yeah, I'll be all right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. 
like in my book, I show one where you do like a little stair thing, um, figure of eight underneath a foot. But I think this one works better because it's, you know, this is the problem here. So you want to try to maximally stabilize this. Yeah. yeah. But maybe try another walk, just just that movement. Yeah. So you well, you still be able to do it, but you should feel. Yeah, you should feel a bit restricted. Okay, that's it. That's right. No, no, it's fine. No, no, because the ligaments are here, so as long as it's covering them and a bit more, it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you got like a little, if you got like a little crease there, and sometimes you can just stretch the tape out. Just take it out around it. Yeah, yeah. Not that it really matters, but. Yeah. 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 No, it works really well. It's very. It does, right? Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So you could use that as a, as, um, a preventative. And a preventative, yeah. Because a lot of... Like that yeah, idea. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when a guy or girl says, can you tape, like, for your rugby, you know, can you? what can you do to prevent me from having a sprain? Can you do this? So for preventing my, my ankle from playing up for fencing, I could put that on... You can do that. And in my book, I show self-tape, and you can just watch on a QR code. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you just you put your foot and like just have a go. I like that, too. I've got a girl who has done, literally just done this about... Two weeks ago, so yeah. I'll be trying Yeah. Then, I'll give it up. Yeah. We meet out this Monday, 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 and she's going to teach me about the group of John and Lavin. What's that? One of our university lectures. Ah, it's John's book. She's teaching us from when we were learning in Munich. Okay. Oh, cool. That's all right, huh? There's a book. There's an extra book for you. Because there's new techniques in it from what we're doing today. We are all done, are we? We're next one. Oh, you're not done yet. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. I thought you'd. Uh... Yeah. I think you did. I think you did. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, there's loads of uh, university lecturers using all my stuff. They say, sometimes they just play my videos. Rather than lecturing, they just play my video. All right. Yeah. Yeah, my, yeah it's on the recommended reading, my MET. I'm just wondering if my second edition will be as popular. Hopefully. Well, it goes from nine chapters to 18 chapters. Yeah. But then there's extra stuff in there. There's, there's nothing new I've written. It's an amalgamation of other stuff from my like, shoulder book. So it's, when I talk about shoulder METs, I talk about the rotator cuff and stuff like that. So it's a. Uh, yeah. So if you've got all of my books, it probably is not that much difference. Yeah. Yeah. But people will still like it. Because not all of them, not everyone will want to buy all the books. There are two editions. So I got six plus two. Glutes now, no. No. K tip and MET. There's a Pilates teacher who's teaching a workshop and she's called it the Vital All right, is she? I was ready to just like see my good pals. I think called that one today. I think she's calling the danger route. More likely. Yeah. 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 What well, she got a course or a? I'm gonna do it. Pilates teacher. Okay. Selling a workshop to other Pilates teachers and a Pilates school. Okay. Workshop called the Vital Roots. All right. Um, she probably give my book as the course notes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not too worried. I didn't yeah, because I'm sure there'll be students on there saying, yeah, yeah.
This is called a, a J strap. So on as a military, like a letter J, and it gives you, and then you can do one over there to like two syrups, take out the stretch. So it gives you maximum stability and it works really well. Yeah. Takes a bit of practice, huh? Yeah. There's literally a melody to Yeah, that's okay. Try to round the ends if you can, because yeah, yeah. you can see this one is there. Uh -huh. But it's okay, and there. Yeah, we, I didn't bring we just yeah. it. Yeah, just rushing, yeah. Did it, yeah. Um, and I just the ship do it, move it that way, because I've done it the wrong way round. Yeah, yeah. So you would have started the from the inside, um, finish on, on, yeah. the, on the peroneals. Yeah. yeah. But okay, that's all right. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so two, so you can start, yeah, so you're going to, so you start above the malleolus, okay, and then with a slight angle, it'll come down just below the malleolus, and the second one will be there. The yeah. second one lower. Yeah, the second one's a bit lower. Yeah, Robin, try and do it like a, just, just pull it. Yeah, okay. I know, it takes, I mean, remember, you've definitely four times you've strapped somebody else, so is that good? And then finish over here. Yeah. So you won't touch. That's it. So if the ankle swells, it'll be okay. That's probably a little bit too long too for her foot. Yeah. Ah, That's okay. Ankle. Yeah. Yeah, because normally I'd use it, say, a four. Uh, it looks like a four, right? Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't matter, as long as it's not going too far, it'll be fine. And then the next one, just here. Try the rip in it now. Not quite. Mm. But almost there. Pull it that way. Mm. Yeah, so you just... That's it. And that'll cover the CFL, just it'll go below it now. So it'll cover so the ATFL is here. Yeah. So this one covers part of it and that covers the other part. And then it covers the CFL now on, on the posterior ligament. Yeah. That's it, the no stretch, just feed it out. And if you've got like a little twist like that, can you see that? So then rather than just leaving it, if you just pull it, you can just Blend it, and then, then it's out. Okay, it's good. Yes, yeah, so you can probably yeah yeah. If it doesn't yeah if it, if it, if it hasn't touched, you'll be able to stretch it out. Yeah yeah, and you probably won't give it, but it's fine because you're not going to get a blister there. That's fine. Yeah. Huh. That's not good, is it? That's a crack. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Gives a character, right? Mm. Gives a character. That's great. Yeah. Here's your gaze analysis. Yeah. Just look to the left of the screen. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Did the can I use can I use your right leg? That's okay. Yeah. All right. Why not? Only for Rocky Park. Yeah. I must admit, when I went to one in Oxford, I think, it was, it was so strange because I go to the men's toilet and there was like a person next to me dressed in drag, having a wee. And I, All right, mate. I'm like, that's, that's quite cool. But dress as a girl.
Well, Glastonbury, 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 they, they have a Shiwi, they have a Shiwi tent, Love which it. is just just your rhinos for women. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Do that, but if you don't have the rhinos for women. All right, because so the Shiwi's oh, basically yeah. a right. cut that goes that, that's like a funnel. Yeah. So um, yeah. It's so funny. There was a guy just looking at my pink. Things have changed. Pink, pink plastic. <laughs> yeah. God. Right. So we're gonna do an Achilles. Do you want to come to a line in front? Yeah. Sure. Do you want me to, did you want to take one off or do you want to leave? Okay. If you're going to do an Achilles, I'll jump in. I'll let you do me. Okay, let's see. have an Achilles. Okay, you can see it on hair as well. Are you going to shoot your wife? No. Have a line in front, please. So face down for this one. Right. If we, if you go up a little bit more, that's okay, yeah, because he's taller. If you bring the foot up a little bit like this, okay, so. How long have you had this? Uh, this one was about 18 months old. Hmm. It's not so. Well, it's a bit, it's, it's, it's one of the moments because it's a little bit higher, it's coming around to the, coming up towards the tendo. Well, right up here. I was say, I don't feel that much in here. It's mainly just feeling it when I'm actually actively pushing it. Yeah, okay. What's your sport? Running. Running. <clears throat> hmm. I might just up my activity and let it be quick. Any pain, sort of like posterior calcaneus? Even like fat pad area, um, we mentioned the apophysitis, yeah, calcanea, you know, you know the name is the potentially severs there, yeah. But then anything like re retrocalcaneal bursa yeah, around here, you can call it other things like, like, a, like a peristitis, or like an, some call it like an insertionitis, some call it tino peristitis, there's lots of different names, okay, yeah, basically, you know, where the, the tendon attaches to the bone, the periosteum, etc., around here. Any sort of like thickening within the Achilles, you know, if you're like a, like a tendinosis or tendinitis or a para or peri, sort of like, so it doesn't really matter, okay? Yeah, so this one works quite well. Uh, you could potentially drift up towards the MTJ, the muscle tendon junction area, because the tape is a bit longer, so it is going to go up here. When it was taught to me by Muller, they would use two fingers but these two fingers would go towards the lateral and medial head of the gastrocnemius on the posterior part of the femur in here. Um, but on, on cyclists, they would irritate the back of the knee. On a runner, it would be okay. So I've modified it so we're, we almost like finish, so like mid gastrocnemius. Okay, and it just seems to be better rather than continuing all the way up here. Yeah. Uh, right, so the first one is a bit longer. So it's up to you what you use, maybe a seven or an eight, maybe even a six from here. Split the first square. Apply that directly over the calcaneal area here, like that. Now, pull it and peel it back. Right. If I lay that down with no stretch, the corner here is going to crease. So if I apply just marginal stretch, say like 5%, it takes out those creases in the corner here. Okay, so just a little bit, but not much. This works very well for triathletes, yeah, because obviously they've got to run and they've got to go into water. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's like seawater or, uh, sea, sea water or fresh water. Then it works very well. And, and men with hair, with a K-tip, it's okay, as you see in a second. But if he was my patient, and it's not so bad, but potentially I would trim it a little bit. Okay, don't shave it, just trim it. You know the trimmers? Yeah, like maybe like a four. Okay, just bring his hair, yeah. Actually, yeah, the, I don't mind trying this now, don't we, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. With scissors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, oh, that look. I'm yeah. having such a good time. There you go, see? There you go, there you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah, no, like, it's interesting because my osteopath, we run like a drop, a drop, a drop in clinic every uh, twice a week in Oxford. It's finished now. 
and um, and and every time I can, I can hear my um, my osteopath with a you know like <laughs> he's like a <laughs> next one. <laughs> I was thinking oh, maybe you know shouldn't be a hygienic perspective just you know, but anyway. You're in the same shape, of course. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, but you know, after 21 year old after Oxford, we're not paying any any money. It's just like just get on with it. Sorry. So from here, a little bit of stretch, but not much. Okay, and then from there, two fingers or your hand, just glide it straight up. No stretcher. And because you've got hair, you want to really just heat activate it. I'm joking. So when it comes off, it won't be the, the most comfortable. And now because you stretch it a little bit, there's no creases on that sort of corner. Yeah, just on that area there. That would be okay in itself. If you're rushing for time, then that would be fine. You know what I mean? So if you've got like a few athletes you're looking after, and you're like, you know, by the time you've done three bits of tape and do this and do that, time's gone. Whereas in this one, if you've got a few strips, you can just do, yep, yeah, next one, yep, yeah, next one, and, uh, and so on. That's the first one done. So if you want to add another two bits to it, so each finger, so we cut to the first square, we round each end off as well, and then we split each finger so they are separate. Okay, and then apply this tape over the first one. And because we've already pre-stretched his Achilles and his calf, so when he's walking, he's not going, when he's walking, let's say he wanted to run, he's not going to restrict the movement. If I taped him in plant deflection and asked him to walk and run, he'd be like, wow, that's pretty tight. And you want me to run? I got no chance. So from here, so the first finger, 50 to 75%. Okay, so it's 150 75, blend it around, and I tend to finish around the, the middle, like this. And then the second tape, the same again. Okay, so 150, 75, blend it. And then this one tends to cross the first one and blend in perfectly like that. Heat activate from there. Now, with this one, it depends where the symptoms are, because remember, these are symptoms. It's not, K-tape doesn't really treat cause ever, okay? Yeah, so where does it hurt? We tape. Where does it hurt? We tape. Um, so, you know, there's many reasons why you have symptoms, but it never really treats, you know, treat the lower back, but you're only putting tape over the lower back. It's not treating the disc pathology and yeah, and why did you get in the first place? And things like this. Yeah. So where the pain is, I know we said it's more up here. So we could put one directly over. But if he's got a true Achilles issue, then this would be directly over the Achilles. So with this one, we split it like a plaster. Peel it back. And like uh, SJ was saying earlier, you could with a plantar fascia come up uh, under tension, come right underneath it, and on off you go onto it. Same with this one. So pull it either side. 100. Yeah, 50. Okay, so 50 to 75, directly where the pain is. So this would be known. Stick one side down to the same on the other side. And then those two sort of like lugs, you just blend over. One, two. The in the so the tension's in the middle because it decompresses. Levo Tape, which is an Irish company, would call it the pain relieving strip. So we tension. So when you let go, it, it causes a, a recall. So it causes like a like a lifting effect directly to it. Yeah, yeah. But you won't see anything here. You won't see any coiling effect of it. But if I did, if I tension this T-shirt and put a piece here and let go and look under, you'll see it's, yeah. Yes. Yeah, have a walk around, please. Just see how it feels. No tension. 50 to 75. And third one, 50 to 75. Remember, it's all written down for you. And the QR code is in there. Yeah. Yeah. Could you run with that? Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean, because the athlete will want to run, will want to do something, will want to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it's not restrictive taping. Whereas if you taped him athletic wise, athletic taping, and you wanted him to go into the water, he'd be ripping it off. Okay. You must put your mind off the game as well a lot, but when you've got rigid tape and all, you can see what that is. Yeah. Yeah, so it seems to work. You know, there is place for the athletic taping if you want to truly restrict it. Okay, but in terms of, you know, like a niggly sort of Achilles, a niggly gastroc, but you're still active and you're still playing, training. Okay, then this is probably has its place. Cool. You want to have a go? Yeah. And then we...
No? That's yeah, just yeah, yeah. that's just a oh, ligament. It's normal. Do you want to have a go at that one? I mean, probably not far off, then. Hmm? Yeah. What is what? Uh, no idea. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've been to the Rocky. Always fun. Yeah. Yeah. Jump to the left, is it? That one? Jump to the left. Uh, the music. Yeah. I was gonna go. I was gonna get dressed up first, but. Um, We've gone short of got two two frankie burgers uh, and then we've also got an Eddie. Then he was gonna go um, my hubby was gonna go as Rocky, I was gonna have a sign on his back that said retired Rocky. Because <laughs> he's got a keg, he hasn't got a six pack. <laughs> Just have to get him a muscle suit. Wait, you got it. Oh you're gonna have any pops. Oh no, I'll get that. This will be the last one I think, isn't it? Uh, seven, you can do it like a seven. I do. Sorry. Shall we get your Facebook? Sorry? Get your Facebook. <laughs> oh, bad reputation. Oh, it's fine. I can say it's not a bad reputation. It's just a reflection <laughs> of the truth. That's it. Good. Yeah, but that size probably on that table would have been that, that length there. But for some, it's okay, but that's all right. Yeah. What's quite nice with this tape is you can almost like feel any imperfections within the Achilles, you can almost like feel it quite easily. Yeah, you could, yeah, you can almost see it like a thickening. Yeah. That's for Michael. Yeah, that's her. That's her. You should have her. Look at that. That's her, Michael. just a bit lower. What I usually see the worse it gets to come off. <laughs> if you stood that side, yeah, you might find it easier to glide and maybe swap hands. Yeah. Oh, like, like, yeah. yeah. And then as you, so no stretch, and then use your, like, a little bit of tension on it, and then just, like, use your fingers and glide it up, and then no stretch, just feed it out, blend it around the Achilles. That's it. And then use your hand and heat activate it now. That's it. Well done. Sometimes it's easier from the side just to do it. Yeah, yeah. actually, mm. it probably is. And this one. Yeah, rather than doing it like that, because it'll take ages, just pull one finger and then do the other finger so they're separate. Yeah? So you just try. That's it. That's, and then you can just peel that back in. And then that goes over the first one. Are you wanting one? Yeah, so they go lateral. Well, it's actually medial, the side doesn't matter. Okay, and then 50 to 75 percent. So it's going to finish about here. Yeah, that's why it's quite nice to mix the color. Yeah, I realized that once I did it, it was like, oh, this is all green. Yeah, Robin's one up. Yeah, that's fine because I normally would pull, peel it. Money value is quite nice. I like quite like that color. And then finish and just oh, overlap it. Well. Yeah, so they blend in together. Yeah, so it's almost like they won then, see? Yeah. yeah. And this and the third one, just where where if you've got any thickening on of your Achilles, you know, that's why you've come to see it's a little bit just now. Like, and that would go directly that's across quite it. Long, though, actually, for that. That'll be okay. That's yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you do one you do one at a time. Uh -huh. 
was yeah. just holding the heel back. Okay, off. sorry. No, no, it's okay. And then, yeah. now which one it does you matter. do first? It makes no difference. Okay. Yeah. So you pull it so it peels it. Yeah. I say, and then peel it back. Yeah. And then feed it, feed it on the edge, and then, and then that's going to finish in the middle over here. Yeah. And then the second one, then will blend in together, so they look like they blend as one. Oh, lovely. Do you like that combination? <laughs> what kind of is it coming? Uh, there's a choice of loads. There's loads. <laughs> I mainly just use the. Yeah. I like a military one. Huh? You mean you don't have blue and green? Just for the... You like it? I've never bought them actually. Yeah. The camouflage one they got. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, there's so many different variations. Whereas most people just, um, most companies have like blue, black, pink, and beige. Yeah, like if you look at the Chinese ones, they're just one of, sometimes they're orange, yellow. Yeah. No, nothing. No. Now you could have your own tip branded with rock tip, but you'd have to buy 500 rolls minimum. Yeah. Well, that's what they used to do. Okay. The middle. Yeah. Don't tell me. Okay. Yes, yes, Okay. I forgot that it was on. Yeah, there we go. Ah, see? Good. Yeah. People were springing that it was starting to peel. If they put a bit there, they could. that would affect no. the use of it. No. No, that'd be okay. A lot of people might put a little bit over where it's peeling. Just to keep it on, yeah. it doesn't affect any, no. any of no, not, not there because no, it's working, yeah, yeah. Not, but not in the corners, yeah. Well, that's good, yeah. That's okay, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, that's or they that's can that's peel it back a bit and just trim it and then stick it down. That should work. That's right. It's just gonna work out how you keep it going. If it was, then what would affect it? What wouldn't it? Yeah, it's fine. Well, that's good, good. Mm -hmm. How did that feel, Michael? Good, yeah. Lovely. Yeah, it's a bit of ligament or tendon flicking. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, I'll come for nine. Then. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Because you'll only have pain for so long. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Are you in, are you practicing a bit more? Yes, you just forced your teeth to say, let's get used to that. Hmm. Just yeah. Reminders. Yeah, I got lots of them in my book. For the postural type. Posture. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as they slouch, they yeah. feel the tension, yeah. so they pull. Yeah, you just use long strips. Like it's quite easy. Yeah, yeah down a mid, well, upper back to the lower back. Right, I have it like this. It's in my book. You can see the pictures of it. Yeah. Yeah. And remind me, whereabouts do you get your tape from? Because you mentioned... Yeah, well, if you're looking at... Uh, just go rocktape.com. Right. Uh, if you remember the code, JGBM. J G B M. She'll send it to you. Right. Yeah, then you get 43% off the tape. I'll be yeah. Instead of it being like £15, it's like £7. Yeah. So yeah. Is it on here and just use... No, my, my code's not on it. That's what we no. said. No, if you go to the rock tip, that's my website on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Good. All good? good? Yeah. So you got two books now. Yeah, so you got two books and type. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. No worries. No one's here every weekend doing a knee tomorrow and hips. Sorry, we no. Don't, no. No. Yeah. I don't see if you could come. Got books, anything books tomorrow, and then on Sunday I'm, I'm prepping, as I said, prepping for Saturday. It's Calcutta Cup, and then. Oh yeah, okay. And then Rocky. Cool. We'll be busy. Then. So if you do see me on Saturday, I apologise in advance for oh, any fantastic. inability to walk in a straight line by that oh, point. Okay. Um, <laughs> We have a tradition during the uh, Calcutta Cup that you both pick your, you pick your teams and you do a shot whenever the opposition scores. Yeah. And being English, I'm very annoyingly boisterous and always when Scotland are doing badly at the beginning, get overly enthusiastic. So All right. in that game in 2017 where England were 30-0 ahead at half, to, just before half time, I said, well, okay, I'll do double shots.